Hey everybody, Juan here, and uh, today we're going to take a quick look at tablet performance. Uh, just see how far the Android operating system has come on these slabs of glass. Uh, and uh, we're going to be comparing the new hot Nexus 7's performance to the performance of the uh, Asus Transformer Infinity. So two top-of-the-line Uber tablets, both, funnily enough, made by Asus. And then just for fun, we might throw in a comparison with an old honeycomb device just so you can see how far we've come since that abomination of an operating system dropped on consumer hardware. So to start, we're going to do a quick boot-up test, and we're going to see which device can get us into our home screens the fastest. I've got to kind of push them up against each other just so that I can hit the power button. And cl oh. See, I'm already messing this up. So we can get these close to the same time. I think I might have hit the Nexus just a fraction of a second faster than the uh, Infinity, but let's see which one can get us into our home screens first. Yeah, it looks like Jelly Bean's already gotten us into a little bit more of a loading screen. Screen brightness is up. This is like the least exciting race of all time. Oh, and it looks like we are into Jelly Bean. All right, that's a, that's a pretty substantial victory there, actually. And it sounds like it's already pulling in my email and new tweets. Now this is actually kind of telling just because uh, this isn't going to be a fair comparison because this uses a lower bend uh, Tegra 3, this uses a higher bend Tegra 3. This, this tablet can actually ramp up clock speed just a little bit faster. Um, but this tablet does have a lower sh uh, resolution screen so it doesn't have to work quite as hard to display graphics on, uh, on the screen. But this is actually a pretty marked shift. Oh, and we're into the transformer. Okay, so repositioning. Now just doing a quick home screen panel test. As you can see, uh, without tabbing through all of my home screens, this is already, air quotes, buttery smooth. And uh, it does a really good job of sort of tracking the speed of which I'm moving through the different panels. So if I slowly move one, it kind of eases the panel over, but if I quickly fling through them, it moves them you know, even faster. Moving over to the transformer, Performance on this tablet is actually very good, but you can always see how the very first time that you throw the, the home screens around, it's just a little stuttery, and then it's totally smooth. So now that all of the home screen panels have been loaded up, you can see how much faster it's gotten from those first couple swipes. And performance tends to do this on Ice Cream Sandwich as well when we load the app drawer. Again, and I've got a, a lot of apps loaded on both of these tablets. The very first paging through is just a little stiff as you go through these different widgets and apps that I've loaded. And then you can fling through them really quickly once the tablets had a chance to go through them once. But moving over to Jelly Bean, it seems like this, this operating system has already done a much better job of loading this stuff up before you get to it. So even though these aren't even stock widgets that I'm paging through, it's not, it's not struggling to pull up the previews and the icons. And it does that, again, it does that really great thing where if you go through slowly, it'll follow your finger. It doesn't snap aggressively unless you fling the page over. Now, just for fun, I'm going to load up a game that has always been something of a struggle on Android. It doesn't ever seem to run very well. Uh, we're going to load up a little Plants vs. Zombies. Let me push this one down just a little lower, move this one up just so you can see it better. And I'm going to try and hit these at the same time. Now, because we're moving away from the Android operating system proper, I would actually expect the Asus to take just a slight lead in getting us into the game. So we'll see if I can hit these at the same time. Yep, Asus is first to the hourglass. or excuse me, Asus, and it's already loading, and it's done, and it's done, you can tap to start. So yeah, just again, now we're talking about an SoC which is slightly more powerful, so even though it's driving a higher resolution screen, it's able to overcome the, uh, the advantages of Jelly Bean's uh, user interface updates.
Okay, so the infinity wins uh, wins victories whenever you've got to throw, uh, you know, especially really graphics intensive hardcore gaming style apps at the tablets. But I also want to show real quick one of the advantages of uh, of Jelly Bean is it seems to smooth out the UI of apps that can be a little troublesome. So if we fire up Netflix which has always been problematic for me on Android. And I'm gonna tip that so that it's landscape for you guys. And tip that so it's landscape for you guys. So it's just a lot f smoother at going through. This is an app that's always struggled on previous Android hardware, especially the last generation of dual core processors like the old OMAPs and the, uh, the Tegra 2s. And you can see just how much better this thing runs on Jelly Bean as you can kind of fling back and forth. And uh, for each individual line of uh, movie uh, suggestions, it, uh, it's just so much easier to use. Like this is, an actually, this is actually a usable app versus on the Infinity, which I've actually let this load a little bit longer than because you know, I've been playing on Jelly Bean. Here, I won't pick it up. I'll actually just leave it flat. You see how painful that is when you just want to check out part of it's not even loading what's popular on Netflix if it's popular on Netflix you would think that this would actually load really quickly because lots of people are doing it and that's always such a bummer because it makes this part of the app completely unusable you always have to go to search and type in something specifically that you're looking for I'll find that I'll like I'll search for something through a web browser on my laptop and then just go directly to that film it's refusing to load any of this this is so disappointing. So there's something about, you know, how, you know, Project Butter uh, or Butta preloads parts of uh, the user interface and menu options, which just makes this so m infinitely more usable. And you can see how much faster, even just like paging through things that I haven't been to yet, how much faster it picks up on that information and preloads it for you versus... Here, this is, this is a menu row that at least has loaded, and let's see if we can page through. Give me one. <laughs> All right, let's try this next row. I know I have more loaded up than this. Come on, guys. See, that's awful. That's, that's not usable at all. So noticeably more powerful hardware, but an operating system which does a much better job of preloading menu elements and options within the app as well, which makes this a much more enjoyable uh, piece, of, uh, piece of hardware to use. Oh, and if you're into Canadian television, the Murdoch Mysteries is actually a lot of fun. Okay, and one more quick test. Now we are joined by a Samsung Galaxy Tab 8.9. Uh, this was a great little tablet when it came out. It's still one of my favorite form factors. It's slightly smaller than a 10-inch tablet. It's just a little bit bigger than, of course, your 7-inch tablet. The 7-inch tablet is almost exactly the same size as the screen on the 8.9, but it's a little easier to hold in your hand, especially if you like to one-hand your tablets. This was a great piece of hardware, but of course, uh, Samsung is super slow about updating their software, and this thing is still rocking honeycomb. It has yet to receive its update to Ice Cream Sandwich at the time of this uh, video, at the time this video was shot, and uh, I just want to say shame on you, Samsung. So, uh, real quick, we're going to race these two, see which one will boot up faster, and then, of course, show you how far we've come comparing Jelly Bean to Honeycomb, for those of you guys still rocking Honeycomb tablets. Now, surprisingly, this thing actually boots up pretty quick, and I think it'll even be faster than the Infinity, but let's see if it can, uh, if it can outdo uh, Jelly Bean. I don't have a lot loaded on this tablet either, so that might make a little bit of a difference. I just felt one of them vibrate. Oh, look at that. That was a photo finish, but Honeycomb just barely uh, beats uh, Jelly Bean to getting into a lock screen. But of course, now if we try and fling a home page, 
And that looks really gross as it sort of stutters its way through even, these are just the stock uh, tablets and stock, I mean, stock widgets that Samsung puts on its device. This is TouchWiz in all its glory. And of course that, you know, even before my widgets are fully loaded, it looks just a lot better here on, uh, on Jelly Bean. Gross, gross. All right, let's pull up an app drawer, pull up the app drawer. I've got way more loaded on this than on this, and fling, and stutter, 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 stutter. It's dropping frames all over the place, just navigating the app drawer. And same thing, this is still fresh, but it, I haven't paged through any of these yet, and it's flinging through these different widgets and uh, icons. So folks, there you have it. Um, if you're still rocking a honeycomb device, you're going to be in for a treat once you get up to ice cream sandwich, let alone whether or not you can make the jump to Jelly Bean. But even on slightly underpowered hardware, Jelly Bean is a joy to use. I really do. It's a toss up whether or not I'll pick up the Infinity or if I'll pick up this Nexus 7 for whenever I have work to do. Thanks for watching this, uh, this sort of rambling a comparison between the different Android operating systems currently out on the market. Uh, as always, you can check out more rants and reviews and tech commentary on yourtechreport.com. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next video.